Right, so today I'm going to show you how you can create a simple watercolour uh, sunset landscape painting. Um, just with cheap paints, cheap brushes, you know, anyone can do this. Uh, so first of all we're going to get the page nice and wet. We're going to dip our brush in some water and just get that page wet. Not too much water, just enough to, to cover the whole page. We don't want puddles. Now we do this so that when we activate the paint, onto the page it spreads nicely and we can create a nice wash uh, for the sunset sky. So once we've wet the page we're going to get some, some oranges, we're going to mix different two different shades of orange together and then we're going to spread that over the page and get a nice wash just for the, for the base of the sky. Just, just as a, just as a subtle colour in the background. Now I'm going to get some red. And I'm going to mix it in with the orange on the palette, just to just to get that bit of a stronger colour. And I'm going to go over the orange, still while the page is where we've got to work quickly here. And I'm blending that red on the bottom half of the page there. I'm adding some more water in between here, just to sort of get that that blend more mixed together, the orange and the red, get that get that nicely blended. Just filling in a bit of the gaps here at the bottom. You see I've left a gap at the very bottom, that doesn't matter too much. Just we're gonna add some something there later on. What we're gonna do is we're gonna give it a quick dry with a hairdryer. And this is so we can start adding darker colours without the, without the dark colours blending in with those those orange and yellow and red colours. As long as the page is wet, your colours are going to mix. So if you want to add anything else, then make sure the page is dry. So we're going to get together some blues and purples here, and we're going to going to try and create that night sky that hasn't quite appeared yet or disappeared, depending on whether this is a sunset or a sunrise. Uh, I've dropped a bit on the page here, it doesn't really matter because that's where I'm going to add the blue anyway, luckily. Schoolboy error that I have to drag, drag the uh, wet paintbrush over the page to get to the paints. I wouldn't advise doing that. But here you can see I'm adding some blue at the top half of the page just to create that night sky. Now I'm, I'm trying to blend in the blue with the, the reds at the bottom half of the page there. Get plenty of water in there. I've added a bit too much water, so I'll use my kitchen towel just to, to soak up some of that water. But I'm using that water to, to blend the two together. Now I'm just using cheap watercolour paper here. It's not it's not too thick, and it's still working quite well. This is why I've I've taped it down to the table so that it doesn't curl up. So we'll give that a quick dry again, as I say, we're going to add some darker blues on the top of this. But we'll give that a quick dry. So once that's dry, I'm going to get some more blue and purple and mix them together. But this time I'm going to add a bit of black just to make that a little bit darker. Just so we can get those top corners and the top half of the, the top quarter of the page really a little bit darker, um, just so we can see the transition between the night and the uh, and the day further towards the bottom of the page. So I'm going right to the edges of the page here, making sure there's no gaps around the edge. And I'm blending that into the to the to the rest of the paint there, using a generous amount of water to do that. So once I've added the darker blues in, we're going to give that another dry, just with the hair dryer.
Then what I'm going to do is I'm getting a square brush and I'm going to mix some reds, um, some quite rich reds, and I'm going to use the edge of the brush just to, to paint in some, some clouds. Uh, the darker the colour, the closer the clouds are. So we're going to start off with some quite rich reds and I'm going to just use the edge of the flat, and flat edge of the brush and just put some thin clouds in in the foreground there. Put some smaller ones to make them seem further away. Then what I'm going to do is I'm going to get some more paint but I'm going to make sure this is a bit more wet. Um, the wetter the paint the lighter it becomes. So I'm going to get some more wet, wet paint and I'm going to put some lighter clouds to make them seem further away from the foreground. I'm going to put a few just, just in the blue half of the page just to get that you know that transition between the two halves overlapping a bit. Now what we're going to do is we're going to get some, some more red, um, quite a light red and what we're going to do is we're going to paint some hills into the foreground. So just one swift movement we're going to create the top of the hill and just fill that in with that red colour. Then what we're going to do is we're going to give that a quick dry so that it allows, it allows us to paint over the top. So once that's nice and dry we're going to get a different colour red, a darker colour as I said before, the darker the colour the more forward the, the, the object becomes so we're going to get a darker red bit of purple in there as well and we're going to paint another hill which is going to be more more close to the foreground here so we're just going to swiftly move that paintbrush up there still revealing that one in the background I'm going to fill that fill in the gaps And I'm going to give that another quick dry. So once that's dry, we're going to repeat the process and we're going to put one more hill in the very foreground with an even darker purpley red. I'm going to add a little bit of black this time just so it's definitely dark. So then we're going to grab a finer brush and we're going to create some foreground interest and we're going to draw some telegraph poles. So we're going to get some, try and match the, the most forward mountain colour as much as we can and we're going to get a little cross drawn just on the top of that hill there. And then another one further down the hill and so on. Now I made a mistake on this bottom one here, I added too much water so the actual pole started bleeding into the background um, so I had to to dab that up there and do some tests on a, another piece just to get my consistency correct. So I'm going to give that a quick dry just before we add the final details. So for the wires I'm going to use a black fine liner pen 
just because it's going to be really tricky to get them really fine lines with the black paint. So I'm just going to draw some curved lines, just imagining where the gravity would be on those telephone wires from each pole to the next. Keeping perspective in mind, the wires will get wider the closer they are to the foreground. Now I'm just going over some of the poles with my black pen just because the, the paint wasn't really strong enough to really show them. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to use my white ink pen and I'm just going to dot some stars around in the top half of the page, just randomly dot these white dots around. And they're quite subtle but that's alright because it's not completely black, it's not completely night time so this wouldn't be the case in, in real life so just subtle stars. And now for the satisfying part, we're going to take off the mask and tear to reveal that nice white frame. And there we have it, the finished piece. For more watercolour and art tutorials, press the subscribe button and I'll see you next time.